All right, everybody, here we go. Uh, it's me, Gregory Manorino. This is my post-market wrap-up on this Tuesday, February 25th, 2020. People, stocks got walloped yet again. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped nearly 900 more points on top of the 1,000 from yesterday. If you recall the video I did this morning, Right off the bat, my first paragraph was very specific. I said, although stock futures were pointing towards a higher open, a triple digit gain, I didn't like it. It looked weak and I said it would not be surprised if the market finished in the negative. Well, to say the least, this market finished in the negative. But again, as much as people want to be looking at the stock market, and this, what we've seen so far over the last two days nearly 2,000 point loss in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, 3% across the board today alone. This is not where you should be looking. I want to shed some light on what happened today. And I cannot overstress the importance of what I'm about to tell you. So whatever you're doing, stop. Okay, sit and focus. Here we go. In my view, we just witnessed the first real crack in this debt bubble. Why am I saying that? Well, let's talk about our friend Rick Santelli here on CNBC. Rick Santelli, the bond market guy, he was concerned, rightly so, that there is less demand for short term U.S. debt. What does that mean? Well, it's pretty simple. Once demand starts to wean off, you're going to start to get a sell-off. A sell-off in this bond market is inevitable and it will be earth-shattering. Earth-shattering. Understand why it will be earth-shattering. This debt suppression cycle began under President Barack Obama. An incredible, enormous amount of, of debt has been purchased by the Federal Reserve. Again, QE1, QE2, Operation Twist, backdoor debt buying. Um, and to put another perspective on this, President Trump is not a stupid man. I know a lot of you don't like him. But during the campaign, when he was campaigning to be president, he, he directly explained how suppressed rates were inflating a big, fat, ugly bubble in the stock market. Now, he had it 100% right. And that's the main reason why I voted for the guy, because I'm like, this guy knows what's going on. But what he chose to do is not just take Obama's playbook, but multiply it, multiple fold. Again, not only do we have a continuation of suppressed rates, we have calls for negative rates right from the same man who said that suppressed rates were inflating a stock market bubble. The fact that today we got word that the demand for short-term debt is falling is the biggest red flag I can possibly imagine, and it's, it's a crack in the debt bubble. Let's talk about a few other things here real quick. We had a pan sell-off. Metal sold off. Crypto sold off. Crude oil sold off crushing the energy sector, crushing the financial sector that helped suck stocks lower. Now, again, we've seen a pretty profound sell-off here in this market. Does it mean it's going to continue tomorrow? No, it does not mean that. As a matter of fact, what we should be looking for is a bounce, and then we should look to get short that bounce. Um, I'm short this market. I've been short this market. I told all of you what I did on Friday after not one, but two warning videos 
on this stock market. To say the least, people, I nailed it to the wall, but it's not about me. It's about you. It's all about you. Why do I do this? Did I have to announce to everyone that I sold my positions? No. Did I have to do not one, but two warning videos about what we're seeing talking about the yield curve? Absolutely not. Do I need to sit here right now and do this? No, I don't need to do it at all. But I always fall back on my core beliefs that we are responsible for each other. And I guarantee you that I have saved people out here a lot of money, maybe in the millions, maybe it could be tens of millions. I have no idea who listens to my work, who, uh, who takes this in and, 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 and makes it happen. People, right now, you, if you have followed this blog for, for all the years I've been out here, you have the high ground. You have put yourself in all the right spots. I've explained to you since time immemorial that this stock market would go higher until it doesn't. Well, we just had a pretty profound moment hit us here. Um, this debt market, I look, they want to hype up the coronavirus. Let them do that. Um, they're going to blame the coronavirus here. But the fact of the matter is we have a, what was a big, fat, ugly bubble, which has turned into a monster. The mother of all bubbles. Okay, you don't hear about stock market, stock market valuations, how nothing makes sense anymore, the disconnection between the economy and the stock market. No, no, no. All we hear is that we're doing great. Larry Kudlow was paraded out today on CNBC talking about the booming economy, the strong economy, that we're adding jobs. But he will not tell you that we have less people working today than during the, the last financial crisis. Look it up for yourself, the labor force participation rate. He will not explain to you that we have the two biggest sectors of our economy, um, not the markets, of our economy, the service sector and the manufacturing sector literally cratering. You can't know that it's above your pay grade. You have to be persuaded that everything is fine and you should continue to buy stocks here. If you were to buy stocks right here and now, you would lose the high ground. I have zero core positions right now, zero. I am trading this market now to the short side. Um, now, the last thing on this earth that we want to do is buy stocks here. I don't care who's telling you to do it. We now have a crack in the debt bubble. And understand why this is so profound. I've explained to you all before anybody else, before billionaire hedge fund managers, before Alan Greenspan started ringing the alarm bell that there is a potential for a sell-off in the debt market. Suppressed rates have allowed this stock market to go into stratospheric levels, inflating the largest bubble we have ever seen in the history of mankind. There's, been no, there's nothing like it at all. And the debt keeps pouring in. I want to talk about that in a second. Understanding that suppressed rates, just as candidate Trump explained, inflate stock market bubbles, calling it a big, fat, ugly bubble, we've had this continuing throughout Obama's entire term and right into uh, the, the Trump era, inflating a hyper bubble, a hyper bubble. Now that we're seeing less demand for short term debt, I mean, people don't want to hold long term debt. That's the fact. That's why we have an inverted yield curve. People who don't, even, don't want to even hold short-term debt here. So again, this precedes a sell-off in the debt market. A sell-off in the debt market is going to happen. A sell-off in this debt market is going to be so profound, it's going to literally shake the entire core of the earth and every single human being on it. This debt bubble is the greatest threat to mankind. This debt bubble makes climate change look like eating an ice cream cone walking through Central Park, okay? This is a clear and present danger to every living person on the planet Earth, okay? Every living thing, as a matter of fact. We watch the population boom on the back of a debt bubble. They have risen in tandem like a hockey stick. That should tell you something when the debt bubble bursts and we're getting, we just got a crack in it, a real crack today. Um, let's talk more about debt. 
Now, how many of you recall this guy explaining to you the Federal Reserve must act or this is going to come down? How many of you recall this guy explaining to you that the Fed was going to dramatically cut rates multiple times? Today, we're hearing from Fed presidents and Wall Street bigwigs that multiple cuts are coming, as many as three this year. Okay? Uh, yes, I do scare myself from time to time. Like, like Friday when I sold all my stocks and I told all of you I did that. That's a little bit frightening. I was the first. I was the first. Okay, all of you, if you were right behind me. So we were all first, those that got out of this market. You remember, be first, be smarter, or cheat. We don't cheat. We never cheat. Okay, so we are going to be smarter and we're going to be first. We were first. Look, here's, here is the most clear way I can think of putting this. People, we are existing under the crushing weight of a monster. A monster the likes of which the world has never seen. This is this debt bubble which they're about to hyperinflate. The Fed must act or this is it. Or this is it now. This 1,900 points, 2,000 points, whatever it is that we just lost, is going to seem like nothing. The real price of the Dow Jones Industrial Average today is nowhere near where it is right now. Not even close, by probably two-thirds or more. So that should tell you where the stock market can and will potentially go. And I'll tell you something else. It's going to overshoot. Markets always overreact to the upside or to the downside here. This is going to be opportunity again at one point. This market is absolutely risk on right now. It's been risk on since the Federal Reserve started QE1, okay? Since they unfroze the credit markets. We are facing yet again another credit freeze. Another credit freeze is coming and they know it. How do we know they know it? Because of the repo scam. The Fed pumped over $75 billion into the repo market today. Passing cash back and forth between one bank and the other, keeping the short end of the yield curve pinned down, giving the illusion of liquidity. Although we have trillions upon trillions of dollars floating around in digital space, they don't exist, they're not on the elemental chart, they're in fantasy land, there's not enough of it, we're drying up. That's a fact. This is why the relentless acquisition of debt in perpetuity is the only thing keeping this whole thing afloat. The only reason why the stock market is where it is right now. Take the words of then candidate Trump, who is now, I don't know who he is. I think he's a complete imposter. He, the guy then is not the same guy now in any way, any shape or form. He's led people to the slaughter on a grand scale. Um, people are being set up for the largest transfer of wealth that has ever been seen in the history of the world. People like myself and the Wall Street banks have benefited by Donald Trump and his pushing of the stock market, his praising of the stock market uh, like nobody else. This, the Wall Street banks have done phenomenal, uh, windfall profits. Um, that's not by accident either. Uh, as the middle class has been forced to endure suppressed rates, unable to earn a real rate of return on their interest earning account to just to push cash into the stock market, just to make the CEOs, the traders, the Wall Street banks richer and richer and richer. The middle class has been paying for it all, and they're about to pay a lot more, a lot, lot more. Now, again, let's just put this together because I want to I want to really get this into your head. The fact, the fact, uh, and I got a nice snapshot of this and I posted it on Twitter, I posted it on Facebook, I posted it in my chat room on my website, traderschoice.net, where everything you could possibly need to rip the face off of this market, even now, is still there. Um, I almost lost track of what's going on here, people. But this, this, this sell-off in the debt market, oh yeah, that's what I was talking about, the snapshot. The fact that we're seeing the entire yield curve collapse. The U.S. 10-year yield hit an all-time historic low. 
the the 30 year an all time historic low. This is history in the making, people. You think that this is just a blip on the radar screen again? We've never been here, and there's never a reason to panic. You got to sit back. And again, if you've been with me all these years, you already have the high ground. I can't stress that enough. You've gotten yourself into the right spots, bidding against this debt, becoming your own central bank, holding cryptocurrencies as well. I feel that these are part of having the high ground, getting your cash out of these markets like I did on Friday. <laughs> what a call, huh? Um, who else publicly announced that? I want to hear of one other guy, one other market guy out here who's been a raging bull since the election of Donald Trump publicly said he sold all his core stock positions. I don't think there's one other guy or, or girl on the planet. So I was first. <laughs> and I'm very proud of that. So were you, if you follow this my blog. And uh, I'm very proud to say that. All right, look. Um, so we understand that the demand for short-term debt is falling. This demand is going to continue to fall. And then we're going to get the sell-off. When the sell-off comes, you're going to see rates spike very, very quickly. When rates spike very, very quickly, and I have no idea when this is going to happen, you're going to see pressure on the stock market like you have no idea, like, like I don't think anyone has any idea of what, what can possibly happen. Thousands of points per day, not just 1,000 per day, three, four, 5,000 points per day. This is how fast this potentially can unfold in the hyper inflated debt bubble environment that we are in. This is why it's going to take everyone by surprise. This is why you got to be first or smarter and you will never cheat. Understand? So um, we today have witnessed a crack in the debt bubble. I promise to keep all of you on top of this as I always have. And, and I want to take a bow and thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. Today, my YouTube blog hit 100 thousand subscribers around the world to me that says greg you're doing something right you're saying the right things and i care about all of you i really really do and i want you all to care about each other because let me let, let's just put all this this stuff aside okay what's going to matter is you you and me all of us all of us together are going to need each other because we are staring down the barrel of a worst case scenario right now a worst case scenario is going to unfold at one time. Is this it? We'll see. If the Fed does not get in here and start buying the debt that demand is falling to a greater degree, if they don't start cutting rates, sure, this is going to destroy the middle class. Either way, however you want to look at this, and I've been warning all of you, if you're a member of the middle class, you're in a lot of trouble. At this point, if you're a member of the middle class and have not taken action, it's too late. It's too late for you. You're, you're going to the lower rung rapidly as this thing unfolds. Um, you should have been for a very long time betting against this debt, becoming your own central bank, adding to those positions, moving forward, uh, trying to ponder what you can do. Because we're here. We're here now with that first crack in, in the debt bubble. Um, again, the Fed's got to make up the difference. If the Fed doesn't do that, it's over. It's over now. All right, with that said, people, uh, love you a lot. It's truth. Please share the video. Love each other, people. Love each other. Okay, we are not each other's enemies. I don't know, the, I know another way to put it. We're going to need each other. We are going to need each other. All right, please share the video. I'll see all of you in the morning. I'm out of here.